Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Schneider Electric PSC training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PSC programming. Let's see what we have in this lesson. This lesson we are going to cover the off delay timer instruction. In our previous tutorial, we have already studied the pause timer instruction and the on delay timer instruction. You can head there to understand how they work. So here we have the T of which stands for timer off delay. And just like a pause and pause timer and the on delay timer, we have the same output representation except for the fact that here we have T of which stands for the of delay timer. They have the same parameters enable parameter and error notification parameter. So let's see what it has as operation. Okay, so we have the, the input. Pin I N. So it says that if the input becomes one, the output is one. So when the input is one, the output becomes one. And if the input becomes zero, then the internal timer will stop. So the logic one on this input parameter will set the output parameter to one. And if the input parameter becomes zero, then the internal timer will start. So if this becomes zero, then the internal timer will start. And when the internal timer becomes equals the preset timer, then the output will now go to zero. Okay, so like in the case of on delay timer where the on operation was delayed, here it is the off operation that is delayed. Okay, so let me just demonstrate this in a machine electric PSC software. Okay, so I will select an off delay timer. There are two ways to do that. I can either go to the library and search for t off and i can drag it into my environment like that or you can go to data selection and just type t off here i can place it where you want to put it in your program okay so i will just delete this and i will stay with this okay so i will just close that and i will drag and place the normally open contacts and I will connect it as such. Give the preset time to 10 seconds and I will just allocate some internal memory to this. Call it S0 or validate it. No address. Okay, so I will just put some empty logic at the output. Let's build the project. Okay, so we have built and connected the project already. And now you realize that if I turn on this, okay, the output becomes one. And if I turn it off, let me set it to zero. Then the timer will start. And when the timer becomes, the internal time becomes equals the preset time, the output will go back to zero. Okay. Good. So it has gone back to zero. So that's what those two statements mean. Okay. The last statement is that if the input becomes one again while the timer is running, that is before the timer reaches the preset value, the timer stops and resets without the output being zero okay so let's see what that means here yeah. so it means that if this input goes high okay and it goes low like that it goes back and the timer starts if it becomes one again while the timer is running okay you see the timer will reset and the output will never go back to zero the output will never arrive zero so that's what that statement means by saying that the output okay, without the output being set back to, to zero okay so i hope that makes sense let's see what will happen okay so let's see an exercise to practice this it says that design a psc ladder logic program that will start a pump p1 with a pulse input and after five seconds delay it starts another pump p2 p1 stops and then p2 stops five seconds after the stop push button is pressed okay so we have two pump P1 and P2. 
P1 will start and after 5 seconds P2 will start and when P1 stops, 5 seconds later on, P2 also stops, that is after when you have pressed the stop push button. So take some time to review this problem and try to develop it before looking at the solution. This is a hardware circuit. We have wired our two pumps at the output and our start and stop at the inputs. Let's see what the logic, the ladder logic says. This is our ladder logic and in our first run, we are lashing for pump 1. Okay, so this is a lashing circuit. When you press the start push button, you realize that there will be a flow of logic. This is a normally close, okay, normally close contact and we have wired it normally open physically and we have wired it normally closed internally. So there will be a flow of logic and this pump will be large because it will be large, the contact will close. This contact will close and then after we have removed our hands from the start switch, then this will still be true. So this logic will be true. So pump 1 is now running. Because pump 1 is running, all its contacts will close. So this contact will close and this contact will also close. And in that case, when this contact is closed, it was going to start this timer block. Okay, so this timer will start timing and five seconds after, we have a logic one here and pump two will come on. So our pump one has started and five seconds later, pump two has also started. And now to turn it off, you realize that if I press the stop push button, then this logic becomes four, so pump one goes off. Because pump 1 goes off, this logic will go away. Okay? And when this logic goes away, this timer block goes off. And because this timer block goes off, remember that this was also latched when this pump was running. And this timer block is no longer active because this pump has gone off. And in that case, what happens is the logic here will fall to zero. Okay, this logic will fall to zero and this is an off delay timer. The off delay timer will start its timing. And at that moment, okay, remember that at that moment, this is also on because the moment P1 was running, this timer was on and this was one. So this logic was true all along. Okay, so when P1 goes off, this logic falls to zero. This timer starts and when this timer starts five seconds later on this output will go to zero and when it goes to zero this timer this contact will now open and when it opens our form two will go off okay so let's see what we have in our in our software okay, so i've already created already created it so this is our this is a project running okay so what we have to do, I will now start the pump by hitting the start operation and now the pump 1 is running, so 5 seconds after pump 2 will come on, good. So pump 2 is now running, so pump 1 started, 5 seconds later one pump 2 starts. Okay, and if I release my hand, it's a feedback path, it will not affect anything, so this logic is now false. Okay. So if I now close the physical switch outside, okay, or I make this logic to become true. So if I make this logic to become true by setting it to one, you realize that pom one goes off and five seconds after pom two will go off also. Okay, so that is our logic. It actually works as expected. Okay. So you can take some time and study it, okay, it's not difficult to understand, okay, give me a comment if you, you feel that you don't understand anything, okay, okay, so we'll go back to our presentation, okay, so let's wrap up this, let's see what we have learned so far, okay, so we have understood that for a C off timer, that is for an off delay timer, if the input becomes 1, the output becomes 1, if the input becomes zero, the internal timer starts and when the internal timer reaches the preset timer value, the output becomes zero. And if the input becomes one again while the timer is running, that is before the internal timer reaches a preset value, the timer stops and resets without 
the output being set back to zero okay okay so that brings us to the end of of delay timer operations in the next lesson we are going to study how we can dynamically change the preset time remember we have always been giving the time the preset time at design time now suppose that we want to change the preset time depending on some circumstance or some situation we want to delay it longer when we don't want to where we don't want to directly stop the operation so how can we dynamically change that we are going to see it in the next tutorial okay so please if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorial and if you find this video helpful please uh, give it a comment below and if you also think that it needs improvement also give it a comment below and thank you very much for watching so see you in the next video